Welcome to Happy Horror Time. My name is Tim Murdoch. And I am Matt Emmert. And if you are a Friday the 13th or Nightmare on Elm Street fan, we have someone that we are interviewing today that you are absolutely going to love. We have the sole survivor of Freddy. Ver- no, not the sole survivor, the dual survivor. Oh, but the, right, yeah. yes, the final girl from the final, Freddy- final girl. Yes, from final, final. Freddy versus Jason, <laughs> the lovely, the talented Monica Kina. Hello! Hi, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. So good to be here. We just have to tell people listening that we are so fortunate that so a friend of Tim and ours, Stephen Wallace, we want to give him a shout out, um, connected us to Monica because we all used to be on a kickball team together called the Scream Queens. And we actually mentioned this in our last interview, but we each had our favorite Scream Queen on the back of our uniform. And Stephen had... M. Kina, Monica Kina on it. But Monica, not only was she so awesome to do this interview, she actually came to one of our kickball games. Yes. You remember that? <laughs> I do. I have the picture still. That was so fun. And remember, we, like, we took, I was basically like sort of the like celebrity guest like mascot or something. And it was so fun. And I wore red. I wore, because your guys' uniforms were all red. And yep. yes, Stephen's name was, um, I'm sorry, my name was on the back of Stephen's jersey, which was awesome. And uh, so I wore all red. And we have that one picture of all of us, me and the, uh, the whole team, like screaming. <laughs> yes. I mean, how cool Love is it? Love that was, picture. We got one of the actual screen queens to come to our game. So yeah. that was great. And that was, I think, <laughs> six years ago, right? Can you believe it? I can't. Seems like yesterday. It does. It does. But, so we have a lot of questions for you today. And forgive us if you've heard some of these questions before, because I'm sure people ask you some of the same things but like the first thing obviously we wanted to ask about it was what what was the audition process like for freddie versus jason like did you know how popular these franchises were at that point when you were auditioning no i really didn't i probably no you would think i would but i i really didn't i never was a big horror fan growing up just because to be honest do you i don't know i i almost feel like i've told this story several times before and it seems so perfect to be true but the fact of the matter is the first tour first and i was hoping last horror movie i've ever seen was nightmare on elm street oh. and it was and i was never i never the, like the most intense any television or movie viewing got at my house was like the Flintstones, you know? <laughs> Incredibly <laughs> so, intense. <laughs> yeah. And so when I was <laughs> when I was in second grade and I grew up in Brooklyn, I slept over at my best friend Leanne's house and Nightmare on Elm Street was on TV. And I remember her, like Leanne and her two cousins, what were their names? Tammy and Teresa. They were twins. They were like glued to the screen and they were loving it. And I was just so disturbed and terrified and I was trying to close my eyes and look away but I didn't want to look like I wasn't cool so um you know I I did my best to try to like block out the sound you know without actually I you know I was like humming in my head and sort of just like pretending like to look around the room at like different you know I don't know the wallpaper, or whatever. Be like anything to sort of divert my attention. You're a fan. From- <laughs> and you're like, you're like, hey, you guys have Flintstones on DVD. Can we just watch the Flintstones? I mean, anything scary. And of course, this movie's about this terrifying looking guy that comes for you in your sleep through your dreams. So I was like, oh great. Well, now I can. That's it. I can never sleep again. And I <laughs> resolve myself to just trying to do that and I mean it got to the point that I the teachers at my school started getting concerned about me because I looked like I was traumatized I looked because you weren't sleeping because you weren't sleeping I I, I lost so much weight I got like super skinny I had like circles under my eyes I, (laughs) I just I looked like a zombie and I and my mom was I guess she got really concerned too after that happened so my mom found I think this is this was like long ago she went to the library i remember and she found a picture of robert england as robert england or an article or something but it had pictures one next to the other of him as looking like a normal guy without the makeup and then him in makeup uh in a picture right beside that and i had that taped up to my wall near my bed for as uh, honestly until i was like a teenager i remember just like having like a mantra before i went to sleep 
at least in the beginning. And then I thought it was bad luck to take it down ever. So oh my I never God. Did. Wow. Um, but like... I used to say, like, he's not real. He's not real. He's not real. It's just a movie. He's not real. And that was the first and last and only horror movie I'd really ever seen wow. as a and then cut child. Jesus, darn one. Yeah, but wait. Yeah. So when you were, when you auditioned, were you like, oh my God, this is my chance to face my demons? Like, I mean. You know, I, 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 I honestly, by that time, I sort of, believe it or not, like, I, I don't know if this was conscious or unconscious. I kind of, didn't put the two together. I did when we were shooting. I, I certainly did. Because then it all sort of came flooding back to me. And I thought like, oh, my God. I, but I remember, oh, my gosh, I forgot to tell you this. When I was a little girl, when I when my mom explained to me the thing about it being a movie and not being real, I remember, <laughs> my parents remember this, too. I had like a moment of just almost like a tantrum that I said, when I grow up, I'm going to become an actress. And I'm never going to make movies that scare little kids. <laughs> <laughs> Cut to 2003, yeah. star of Freddy vs. Jason, Monica Keaton. No, no. But, that right, is crazy... but I thought my little self would be really proud of me because I finally got revenge. And I thought, well, if I were to do a scary movie, it should be this one where I get to kill this motherfucker who, you know, <laughs> I, <first laughs> ruined off, my childhood. <laughs> that, that story sounds like the plot of one of yeah. the Nightmare on Elm Street movies. And like, yes. that is amazing that, so you got, so you're saying when you were auditioning you didn't quite know exactly what it was for or you were well i knew i honestly here's the thing too is that this um the scene that i did for it and i don't think i put the two together because it was called freddy versus jason and i didn't um it was pretty early on so they didn't release the script or anything and i guess i didn't necessarily tie the name freddy to it being a nightmare on elm street thing and that yeah. being connected to friday the 13th and so um, I just knew it was for a project called Freddy versus Jason. And I didn't really delve into it any more than that. And the audition scene that I did was, um, I believe it was the scene that I do on the stairs, like with my father, where, I, where we were talking about Weston Hills. Is he really a doctor there? Yes, or is not yes. he? And, that, um, and so uh, there wasn't a lot of mention of, there wasn't any mention of either of the two, um, the two main icons freddie or jason in the scene so, so you're like i'm uh, doing a drama where my father yeah, kills my mother and exactly. his name's freddie and her like name's that. jason how many <laughs> yeah exactly and i knew that they, in the scene it said my boyfriend's name was will because like, i say like and you knew that will was there this whole time and uh you know so i just yeah i didn't really think too much about it but but i was surprised i'll tell you this at the end of this, that scene uh the casting director and the director ronnie you we're like, oh, wow, great. That was great. Great job. And then um, I just I said, okay, well, do you want me to do anything else? And uh, the casting director, his name is Matthew Barry, said, no, I think that was great. I, I don't have any notes. But then Ronnie Yu said, Monica, wait, can you do one thing? And I said, okay, sure. And he said, scream as loud as you can, as long as you can at the top of your voice. And I was like, okay. And so I did. And I didn't know what that had to do with anything, but. Uh, <laughs> You're like, I'm in I, this beautiful new Christmas movie, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> that is crazy. But, yeah, so but then I your, did, and I guess I had a good scream, so. That was your was, audition, or like, did you have to come back? That was my one audition, and then I, um, I was told that they wanted me to screen test and the original person playing Jason Ritter's role of Will was Brad Renfro. Um, and so he was already cast, I guess, and as, um, as Will. And they wanted me to fly out to Vancouver to screen test against him. And I did. And, and after that, I, I, then that was it. Then I got the part. That's awesome. And they, and what happened with Brad Renfro when they, what, what made them replace him? Was it? Well, um, I'm, I'm not sure. I, I thought he was great. I was really excited to work with him because I was a big fan. But then by that point I knew like, oh, okay, this is like about Freddy Krueger and, and, and Brad was a huge um, Nightmare on Elm Street fan. And he was really, really excited to do it. Oh. Um, I, I think that they, um, Went in another direction. 
Yeah. yeah, I think that they were concerned that he might have like some substance abuse issues at the time or uh, something. I'm not sure. Um, but God bless him. He was such yeah. a great kid. I loved him. I, I mean, I'm like so grateful for the experience that I even got to act with him in that screen test. Um, I wish I could get a copy of it. Maybe someday I can. And uh, And then I spent honestly after i screen tested i didn't leave i never i didn't leave vancouver i i screen tested very closely to a shooting so i just stayed and i started doing costume fittings and everything and um and he was still there too for about another week um and he he stayed for another week after he was he was replaced or let go or whatever and um and so i got to I, it was a really fun experience just knowing him because you know sadly he's gone now and it was yeah. it was great getting to spend some time with him because he's a really special really talented great guy yeah and, no i could totally see him in that role you know yeah. like mm -hmm. i feel like sam having seen it did when they cast jason ritter did they have you re-screen test like with him to make yes. sure he was right yeah yes they did they did what they a did. process i, I mean, know were you like oh okay when is this gonna start and <laughs> like <laughs> well i i i it was um no, I mean, it was funny it all too. Is that it, it all happened really fast. It all happened very fast. In fact, I was so surprised when when Brad left because I because we only had about a week before we started shooting at that point. Mm -hmm. So um, I I I I had no idea how they would even start the process again of finding somebody to replace him, but. Um, and I didn't know this at the time either, but Jason Ritter was great. And I had, I had met him briefly years before. Um, I forget how, well, actually, no, I, I don't forget how he went to NYU. I went to NYU. That's how oh, wow. I, I had known him. I, I mean, I didn't know him, but I had met him a couple of times. And he was a really sweet guy. And I was very excited um, if, if Brad weren't, weren't going to play that part that that it would be jason because jason is totally different but like was just as good just Very as amazing likeable. and yeah. so likable and Definitely. i didn't realize that that uh, ronnie you had directed um what's it called um bride of the Chucky? bride of yes yes <laughs> with, so, with like, john ritter yeah yeah yes. Yeah, that is so, so he funny. Had, he had already met, he had already known Jason a little bit through his father and uh, John Ritter. Oh my God, he was the best. He visited us on the set. He stayed for a week. He it did was so really. Funny. Yeah. Oh my God, that's so sweet yes. to be that. Like that you have the fact that you have memories and, and experiences with people who you know have now passed away that you can look back on and yeah. on memories. That's so cool. Yeah. So he was there for a week with with yes. hanging out. Yes, he was so uh, yes, he was the best. And I mean, I I know that. For, that's a really special memory for Jason as well, because that was sort of J Jason Ritter's big sort of breakout role and for his dad to have spent so much time there with us. And, uh, you know, the last that I um, saw John Ritter was at the premiere of the movie. And my, <laughs> my mom went up to him and said, are you Jason Ritter's father? And he said, yes. <laughs> He's yes, like, I'd I like to say that Jason Ritter is John Ritter's son. But, you know. <laughs> well, she wanted a way to, like, she just wanted a, a cute introduction for her to be like, yeah, well, I'm Monica Keenan's mother. I'm Mary. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> and you know, he was so sweet. And so, but he didn't say, he wasn't like, you know, he, he, he wasn't offended or like in any way, like, I don't know, rude. He was just like, well, yes, I am. I am Jason's father. And she said, oh, okay, because I'm Monica Keenan's mom. Uh, that's amazing. You know, uh, I know you obviously worked with a lot of great people on the film, but two specific people we wanted to ask you about. Um, okay. One, Robert Englund and Kelly Rowland. And Robert Englund, obviously, he obviously has been Freddy Krueger for like eight different films. So yeah. we wanted to ask about where, and then Kelly Rowland, who had not done a lot of acting, but was yeah. known for Destiny's Child. So yes. what was your experiences with them like? Maybe Robert first, I guess? <laughs> well, with Robert, what's funny is I just told you that whole story that I that he, you know, destroyed my Childhood. childhood yeah, yeah. No, you're like hey hey you uh, scared the shit out of me and made people think that my family was abusing totally, me so thanks totally but um um you know okay and here's the thing do you remember that movie i think it's called the new nightmare yeah i didn't oh, yeah. see that yet but that was very similar to my experiences sort of on the set with him 
And I never told him about how he ruined my childhood till the very last day of shooting <laughs> because I just, I don't know, I just was sort of using it and everything. But I do remember like when we would wrap uh, shooting for the day, and if, if, particularly if I had a bunch of scenes with him and a lot of interaction with Robert England as Freddy Krueger, um, even after we've wrapped and I go back to my hotel, I still, if I heard something, I, I, I couldn't, I, I couldn't tell if it was like real or not. And like, I, I it was like that movie, The New Nightmare. Yeah. Like, a, like, or it was method like, acting. It, You're like yeah. taking it home like with you. Like he became an entity all to himself. And it was like, I knew that it wasn't real at this point, but it was, it was crazy. It was scary. <laughs> and you know, Jason doesn't talk. So there's no scare yeah, there. Yeah, there's no, sc no scare. Yeah. But, but I've heard Robert but England is just like a really easygoing, fun he's guy. He's such a nice guy. He's so laid back. He's so nice. He's, he is the best storyteller of anybody. Like, I've done conventions with him since then. And I'm riveted. Like, I can't, I, I, like, it's like I'm hypnotized whenever he's talking. And he just tells all of these stories about how he came to be Freddy Krueger and all of his experiences throughout and he's just the nicest guy he's like a surfer dude he's that's just so like so laid back and relaxed and you would never you would it, that's what's so funny too the dichotomy of it is that you would never think somebody with his sort of demeanor and personality would even be capable of playing such a terrifying character that ruined my childhood. Yeah, that ruined. <laughs> I know, I guess it speaks to like acting chops. I mean, that's the thing. He is like known for Freddy Krueger and I've like, that's his legacy and he's totally yeah. embraced it, which is really cool. Absolutely. But it's yeah. nice to hear that he's a nice guy. I mean, I'm, I'm sure that makes it easier if he was awkward and weird. Well, I guess you'd be extra scared of him. If he was, yeah. But, yeah. but it, it's cool. How about, how about with Kelly Rowland, because I know, obviously, had you known her from Destiny's Child before yeah, that, and and right. what was she, what was she like working with? Because I, has she done much acting before then? I don't. I, I, as far as I know, this was her first acting experience. I think this was the first acting job she ever had, and she, I'm um, like, I mean, it's when I look back on that movie, everybody was so amazing and so awesome, but she in particular was just like the most self-deprecating like loving sweetest girl in the world like beyond like nice and and I mean she gave me so many amazing compliments too like she <laughs> that's not why just that's not <laughs> the only but she did she so she told me I reminded her of Beyonce Ooh, did she ever show up on set no, but they <laughs> talked all the time. They were like sisters. Like I remember just being like, oh my God, Kelly's on the phone again. And she'd be like, hello, B. And I was like, I know that's Beyonce. And I was just, oh, that's so crazy. And I'd be sitting next to her uh, in the van going to work and just like, just like giggling to myself being like, this is so cool. <laughs> that is a pretty cool, like for her, yeah. for her first acting job to be in like a huge franchise film yeah. and to like, and yeah. also she is like, I guess like one of the main supporting characters. Oh, so it's wow. not meaning it wasn't Absolutely. like a throwaway role or anything. No, you know? no. And I thought she was great in it. And yeah. it's so sweet. I, I I saw an interview with her. Yeah, honestly, I just saw it like two years ago. I'm not sure when she did it, but she was talking about how that was her first um, acting job. And, uh, and how I guess she was really nervous and, and she didn't, she was unsteady and, and sort of unsure of herself. And she said that I was so um, helpful to her and I, you know, was so oh. supportive, which was so nice. Yeah, like, no, that and, is and really I, cool. Yeah. Like, I mean, I, there's this one scene where um, uh, she says, like, she's talking about the kids dying and she says, like, it's like it's another um, Columbine thing. And, like, she said, like, I forget, she kept, she kept saying it, she wasn't familiar with the whole Columbine shooting thing. And so she kept uh, sort of saying Columbine or something. And I, I remember just giving her one little note that I was like, I know sometimes words get annoying, especially if you say them over and over again, they sound even weirder mm -hmm. like than the actual word itself. So I said, just think like, cauliflower she was so grateful for that like one little note and i would forgotten that i even ever told her that but do you do you have one of those like look at the script know your lines like do you have that i don't have that yeah i i do i i i think i have like what do they call it like a photographic mem memory That's awesome. like yeah yeah I, I can just read it or i can just look at it once and sort of know it 
So that's a good skill to have. I don't have it. So <laughs> your your so your character Lori. First off, I got a random question. L- Lori Campbell is her name. Did that? Do you know if that was an homage to like Lori Strode and Nev Campbell or anything like that? I just thought I was just looking at that because it's Lori Campbell. I'm not sure I if they don't, did that. I don't. But uh, let's I. I don't know. That's a really good question. It's um, funny because you know what I mean? Her name is Lori yeah, Campbell and it's combined too. But anyway, well, what I was going to say is one well, thing. Let's just yeah. say that it was. Let's, <laughs> okay, like, we'll say, look, on. look, hey, totally is. Yeah. No, but <laughs> one thing that I think is so cool and so you, that's so unique to your character is that she's a survivor of not just one horror franchise, but two mm-hmm. horror franchises. Like literally, you know how it is. In horror movies, barely anybody survives. But the fact right. that you're a survivor in two franchises and you're part of two franchises, like how does it feel mm-hmm. to have the legacy of being like a major part of two different horror franchises? I, it, I mean, it's, feel, it's amazing. I can't, I, I can't even tell you how amazing it is. And to be honest, I'm pretty glad. I think I'm fortunate that I wasn't aware of what a big deal it was or was going to be at the time because I think it would have just been too overwhelmingly intimidating yeah exactly so um when you go to the conventions and you see like the survivors of Friday 13th of the not like the final girls of that that film and the Nightmare on Elm Street girls do you guys do you get along with them oh yeah absolutely um I I get along with all of them. It's um, it's a really, it's a really nice little, unique, little Exclusive clique of people. Club. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Have you done a lot of conventions? Like, do um, I've, I've done it. Yeah, I've done a couple. I mean, not a lot, but I'm still relatively new to them. But um, but I, I one of the conventions that I did, uh, I forget. It was it was called the Women of Elm Street, and so I it was me like as the final one. But it started with, I remember, oh gosh, what's her name? Amanda, who was Amanda. The, in the original. Oh, Amanda Weiss? Wiss? <laughs> yeah, yeah, she was in the I dream sequence. Of, like, yeah. the, oh, the, yes, Tina. That scene Tina. is amazing. And uh, she is so cool. She was so cool. Then um, this other girl, what's her name? Jennifer Rubin. Yeah. Was she, she, was in, she was so cool. Oh my God. And she was so hot in that movie. Which one was that? Nightmare? She was in Nightmare on the The Dream Warriors. The yeah. Dream Warriors. Yes. Um, that, I, <laughs> I, I love that movie. So anyway, since I, since having shot Freddy vs. Jason, I've become a big fan of both of the franchises. So like, you know, so I'm like a fan of the girls when I see them at conventions. Like I was so like flattered that Amanda or Jennifer even were talking to me. Cause I was like, oh my God, she's so cool. I remember that is really cool. Movie. Yeah. You know, you know, the thing is, obviously, you've had a, a very illustrious career. Like, I know we're talking just about Freddy vs. Jason because we're a horror podcast, but, you you know, you've been in a lot of stuff. But I wonder, mm-hmm. is this do, is this the movie most people, like, approach you about or most people kind of? Yeah. It is? Cool. Yeah, like, for you, sure. You, yeah, that's what I was going to say because it's, like, it's so funny. But your cool. career is huge. Your IMDb <laughs> is – there's such a wow factor. And, like, Matt and I just watched um, – Snow White with Sigourney Weaver. Yes, yeah, Snow White, where where I think I think you push her head into a mirror, which I was yeah. like, you <laughs> got to push Sigourney Weaver's head into a mirror. I mean, I know, I know, <laughs> no, that's pretty it, badass. I know, it, it, same, same thing. Like it's like, damn, I am I mean, you were so roughed up in um, Freddy versus Jason and Snow White. Like everything is so physical. Do you find those days just so exhausting? <laughs> Or fun? I find them fun. Um, I mean, they're exhausting. Like, it's funny, like, those aren't as exhausting to me as, like, very intense emotional scenes that are just, like, that have no physicality. Um, to me, because that that's, like, the real work is when you have to really emote and, you know, just be in a dark place for the whole... I don't know, 12 hours that day. And that's hard. The, the physical stuff is just fun. Um, and I, I mean, honestly, <laughs> this is funny too, but I just, I have a real affinity for blood now. Like I love the fake blood. <laughs> like I like the more, the better, you know? And I guess I, I started with Freddie versus Jason. Then I did another a pretty, I guess it's pretty popular with the fans. It's called uh, Night of the Demons. Yes, that, yes, of I'm course. With, blood. 
Yeah. With and Shannon I'm, Elizabeth and Edward yeah. Long and yeah, a yeah. bunch of people in that. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And so, that's a big franchise in its own, like doing that. Yeah. And I'm, yeah, that's cool. Did you happen to see the original that of Night of the yes. Demons? What did yes. you think of that? I love that movie. But again, I didn't put them together. Like I had seen <laughs> Night of the Demons years before I auditioned for our Night of the Demons and I had no real, like I just didn't, I don't know. I, I, I don't know if that's like selective, like memory blanking or something or I don't because it's probably it might be better yeah. actually because then if you're too much of a fan of the movie you're about exactly. to be in it's almost like you can't like be authentic you know like exactly so, yeah. but, but and I remember telling the director and this was after I was cast already um his name's Adam Gira she's the director of that movie of Night of the Demons and he was asking me the same question. Have you ever seen the original? And I said, I have, but I don't really remember it. But I remember it being really fun. And uh, I'll watch it again. He said, no, 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 don't, don't, don't watch it. Don't watch it before we shoot our movie. Because same thing, that he didn't want me to be influenced one way or another. And the story was a bit different. And um, just, yeah, same thing. It's just he didn't want me to have some preconceived notion of what I was supposed to do or not supposed to do. Or, but yeah. you do notice that, like, you play the strong survivor in all of these movies. Like, that must feel pretty good because it's just like, you know, especially like, you know, horror has a lot of different types of characters. But to mm -hmm. be able to play like this strong, tough, responsible, surviving person and in in both of those films, like that, that is pretty cool. It's very respectable. And it's like someone people can really look up to and people kind of <laughs> idolize, especially. So Thank that has you. to be- You're yeah. a role model. No, but that's the thing. It's true. <laughs> I know you. it sounds funny, but like you really are, for horror fans and horror geeks like us, like yeah. you really are like people who play these strong female characters, you know, and, and like the ones that take care of people the one that are, mm -hmm, that are mm -hmm. nice the ones that fight back like are right. really really have an impact on a lot of people's lives so we are like yeah 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 we're, we're I think so because, grateful for it thank you so much and also what's funny is that um uh i'm so small is that like I, you know i'm like barely five foot two so i think it's a real testament to you're a petite little lady yeah yeah <laughs> and but I you know what it's not size can, it's not all about size, oh, right? Matt, <laughs> clean it up. Clean it up. But it, but like I think in both those, um, and probably it's a common theme in in all of the movies where like with the uh, the final girl, the the heroine, the sole survivor, is um is that you, we don't start out that way. We start out like in a way that we seem very vulnerable, very not weak, but just Relatable. inexperienced. Yeah, and like, and yeah, just like a normal little bit girl next door <laughs> yeah exactly yeah and and you wouldn't think that we would necessarily have the the tools or the intellect or the strength to to overcome and defeat these huge um <laughs> villains that we're we're up, up against and i think uh, people can just relate to sort of the journey of um, yeah yeah. No, definitely. You know, one thing we wanted to ask after being in Freddy versus Jason, like, how did that, how did that affect your career path? Like, did you see um, it helping with the career path or was it because, you know, so many people look back on horror in different ways. Like some people are like, oh, so incredibly yeah. proud and it launched their careers and other people are like, oh, sure. I don't even want to think about it, you know, right. and you were already like definitely into your career at that time. But how did it factor right. into your career path? Well, I mean, I think just since that was sort of the biggest. Um, had a huge opening. It was like number yeah, one. Yeah, exactly. It was like the biggest studio film that I had done. So either whether I liked horror or didn't, um, or, you know, if I was into the genre or wasn't, the fact of the matter is that was like a very successful money-making project that, um, so it, it certainly helped me out. Um, but I, did, I didn't feel, I, I sort of, I, I didn't gravitate towards horror um, quickly after that because I didn't want to be typecast. And I thought like I'd sort of, I, I sort of already was at the peak of like, you know, I could, because I remember I was offered this other movie, the sequel to Jeepers Creepers, Jeepers Creepers 2. Oh, yeah. Yes, okay. um, and then what's funny is that at, we were number one, Freddy versus Jason was number one in the box office for two weeks. And then what 
came out, which I guess kind of kicked us out of there, was Jeepers Creepers 2. Um, <laughs> but I had turned down that part because they had offered me the role when I before we had shot Freddy vs. Jason, but I'd already been cast in it. And I didn't want to just be like, you know, like, I don't know why. If I could do it again, I, I, was, I remember thinking like, I don't want to just be this back-to-back -back horror girl. But it's like, <laughs> why not? Like, yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's great. And especially if you get to play these really great roles where you're mm -hmm. like, you know, you're fighting, you're, you're crying, you're screaming. It's like, talk yeah. about a depth of emotion. But um, here's yeah. a fun fact. When I first moved here, I auditioned for Jeepers Creepers 2. Really? Whole, yeah. It was for Izzy, as in Izzy or isn't he? Yes. Have you seen yeah. Jeepers Creepers? Huh? Yeah. The, is he, wait, Tim. This audition, isn't about me. Tim auditioning for Monica. a gay character. That's crazy. Yeah. No, that's so funny. I actually know exactly the role that you probably were yeah. offered because I think. It, Nikki like, Acox, my friend who I've worked with in the past, she, she's, I, I, she and I did a movie together called Crime and Punishment in Suburbia, this movie. Oh, with, I um, love that movie. You do? Oh, yeah. thank you. With thank Ellen Barkin and Jeffrey Wright and, um, um, Michael Ironside, Vincent Carthage, whatever. But the point is, she was in it, and she played my best friend in that movie. And so oh she had God. a couple of scenes with me, and she thanked me after, because uh, I saw her after she had shot Jeepers Creepers too. And I guess it was that I had the, the they were at, you know I was the one that they wanted first, and then after me, their second choice was uh, her. And she said she was so grateful that I passed on it because it gave her the opportunity to do that role and and i i i was happy to let to have her do it because she's a she's great and she's a sweet girl um but i remember her being like oh my god thank you so much for not doing the work <laughs> <laughs> she's like, thank you for yeah for passing did you so you were saying that like so when after freddy vs jason was so big were a lot of horror movies trying to get you or was it more just studio release things or because yeah how did what what happened with that well um well, when I, so I think I sort of, like I said, I, I sort of already told my agents that I kind of wanted to stay clear of horror just for a little while. Mm -hmm. um, and but in terms of um, it being a big studio movie, like I said, I uh, I was offered this role in a, a movie called it used to be called Cheer Up, but now it's called Man of the House with Tommy Lee Jones as a, a cheerleader. I so I did, yeah. yeah, you did. Thank you. <laughs> so that sort of opened the door for me, like to be um, a contender for really big Hollywood studio films, um, yeah. for sure. No, yeah. that's cool. Because yeah, I definitely see it. Look, as much as we love horror, like we, I, I totally understand if someone doesn't want to be like only in one genre or even to try it out. Like, like you said, it does not get much bigger than Freddy versus Jason. Like it's right. like, like you, yeah. girl, I mean, like it's, it's the best role ever. So thank yeah. you. Thank you very much. <laughs> So, Thank you. But then I like, no, no, you know, but it did, but then, but I really did enjoy, um, I, I didn't know that I would like doing a, a horror movie. So, but, and I didn't realize how fun it would be. So then just after a little while went by when say when night of the demons came around and they offered me that I was happy to, to say yes to it. And I was really excited because at that time, you know, I thought, well, I, I kind of think I know what, what, this is all about and what is expected of me and what this requires. And I like doing that role now. I, I love no, playing that girl. No, that's awesome. So we, we have a few more questions and what, um, one thing I, I want to see, this will be, let's see, I, I, this is, could be a really great question. What is one thing you've never told anyone else about your experience working on Freddy versus Jason? Meaning maybe it's just a memory of something, maybe some juicy gossip. One thing, even if it's time that you've never told anyone to this day. Okay. okay. <laughs> and you can make I, it up. No, no, no. <laughs> no well, we'll never true. know. No, but. it's real. It's funny yeah. because I listened to your guys' um last week's episode um, yeah. with what's your name kimberly like, back yeah yeah yes 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 okay so i have a sort of similar thing i don't think i've ever told anybody how in love with jason ritter i was during that <laughs> and that was sort of scandalous <laughs> because really? i had a boyfriend and he had a girlfriend and i just like i i was just like obsessed and in love with him and He's cute. Wow. He's very cute. <laughs> yeah, he was so cute. I remember being so excited for the final scene that ended up uh, they ended up sort of reshooting, but it's on the DVD when yeah. we have our like sex you scene. You guys are in bed together. Yes, yes. the little the little <laughs> sex scene. Yes, and then he like has the glove, right? Yes. 
which is and a I great just, scene. I don't know why they cut that. Maybe they, uh, you know. I think that they wanted it to be sort of more definitive and to have like the two main, that Freddy or Jason be sort of the last image that you'd yeah. see before the credits rolled, which I understand. But, and that was a little bit more subtle. But yeah, I just, uh, I was so in love with Jason Ritter. It was crazy. <laughs> that is so funny. I mean, I can I imagine. Well, I mean, I can. Yeah. I could imagine. Falling I mean, like... especially when you're fighting like huge, scary men. That's a yeah. bond. Mm. That's a yeah. bond. That... Yeah. <laughs> and it yeah. Was, so another thing we wanted to ask you was, um, was there ever? And I think we've talked about this because I know I've talked to you before. But was there ever talk of a sequel after it and bringing Lori back for um it or Lori and Will? Yeah. Yeah, there was, there was. And in fact, I think when we signed our contracts to do the to the original, I think there was even like a writer in there, like saying like, and if, if and when we do the sequel that we'll, you know, make this amount of money and be guaranteed this, that and the other. So I know that they really, I think we're intending to do one. Um, and I'm not, I, I forget what the premise was going to be, but I I know there's a comic book that's, yes, that one of the fans had, had brought to me um, where my character is in it and uh, Jason Ritter's character is in it. And I think it was Freddy versus Jason versus Ash, I want to say. From Evil Dead, yes, I have yeah. heard of that, yes. Yeah. Which gets and, a little convoluted when they start putting like three different people in, right? Yeah, yeah. But, what happened to your character in the comic? Do you know? Oh, that's funny too, is that we're only in like the first like two or three pages and then we get like killed. <laughs> really? <laughs> well, I, first off, well then I hope if they, they were going to do a movie that they never did that. One of my biggest pet peeves with sequels is if they kill off a survivor from the last film. Yeah, because you work so hard. Exactly. Yeah, you I know. Agree. I wonder why a sequel it must have been a rights thing because I know it did well yeah, at the box office amazing. and it must be a rights thing with so many people fighting Paramount, over the right rights line. and everything. So if they did a sequel, would you be up for yeah. reprising the role? Oh my God, of course. I mean, yes. I, I mean, a hundred percent. I've been wanting to do a sequel for as long as I can remember. You know, and then Freddie, supposedly um, Robert England like said, oh, he's so cute. He said that he's been declawed. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I guess since they did the, the remake or whatever of the, new, the newest um, Nightmare on Elm Street that they sort of did that for the next generation and that was the first time anybody else had ever played the role of freddy krueger um, oh the the 2010 remake yeah yeah mm. yeah and so that's what I, and i saw him at a convention not long after that and he was saying he, he was so sweet he like he gave props to that guy and said that that guy had done a really great job and this that and the other and that you know sadly he had been de declawed <laughs> I love that. I, 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 I love know. That. But, everyone but now he says that he's up for doing, um, cause so he's basically saying he was retiring the role of Freddy Krueger. But the last that I heard, um, he's, he's, he's up for doing it again himself. So that's, well, that's pretty awesome. I know that is really awesome. Um, random question about one of the lines in the movie. So you have a line, obviously, that I'm sure you remember that was in like every trailer, which was yes! Freddy versus Jason. Place, Place your, your bet. bet. Yes. yes! So, okay, I have to ask and be honest. What did you love that line or did it make you cringe? <laughs> yeah, why did they I cut it from it. the film? Yeah. I liked it. I I I, I rem you know, it's it's sort of one of the most memorable lines, you know, because I can't remember everything that I say in that movie. If people remind me, I I'll, I can sort of make sense of it. But I remember, yeah, that was such a I thought that I thought that line was kind of amazing because it summed up the whole the whole movie right there. Yeah, <laughs> it was just um, so weird because it was in all the trailers and I then know. it wasn't in the movie, but it's in the so they just released a huge, huge um box set for all the Friday the Thirteenth movies, and obviously they have yeah, Fr Freddy, Freddy versus Jason. Yeah, and it's one of the deleted scenes. And I'm like, there's that line. It's like you, I think it's oh Jason gosh. Ritter. And it's like, they start fighting and you say it, Freddie. I was like, yes, that's where yes. that happened. Like, right, right. What's funny too is that I guess, so when I was doing the cheerleading movie that I was talking about called Man of the House, it's a long story, but 
a friend of mine that sort of was my mentor, um, is my mentor, her name's Sarah Kelly, she's a writer. She is like the girl of this little group uh, that consists of Robert Rodriguez, Mike Judge, um, Richard Linklater, and Quentin Tarantino. Yeah. And so they visited the set of the cheerleading movie I was doing. And it's so funny, Quentin was talking to me and he came up to me and he said that he had gone to the premiere of Freddy versus Jason and he said he was so excited and waiting the whole entire time to hear me say that line. And then he was like, no, 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 it wasn't in there. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, I sat through the whole thing because, like, yeah, I guess that line was so memorable from all the trailers and all the commercials. And he said that it went from like the opening credits to the closing credits. And he was like still waiting and waiting and waiting until people started walking out of the movie theater. And he was like, what, what, what happened? Where, I wanted to place my bet. I'm placing my bet. <laughs> no, I know, no, it's, no, it is a great line. It's just so funny. <laughs> much like a trailer type of line like I almost feel like it was written for trailer purposes you know what I mean it's like hey yeah, I hear what you mean yeah I hear what you're saying um you know one of the final questions we wanted to ask you was um do you still talk to or keep in touch with anyone involved in the the film any of the actors in the crew any director anything well I well, yes um well obviously Robert England I see frequently at conventions uh as well as Catherine Isabel um uh -huh, yes who played Gibb uh, yes, exactly. Yeah. And then uh, I see a couple of those people. I haven't seen her talk to Kelly. <gasps> That's not true. I've seen her twice since then. But um, I saw her once at a bowling alley and once at uh, at some event. Um, and she, again, is, was just so lovely. Um, she didn't give I you haven't... backstage passes to when Destiny's Child performed at the Super Bowl. <laughs> I mean, that no! Is... <laughs> no, but no. Do you ever no. see your neighbor, Steve? Uh, yes. Wait. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wait, we have to tell, oh, well, for the listeners, yes, yeah, so um, um, Monica lives uh, lives next door to one of um, Tim's ex-boyfriends. I don't know That's if you knew. Right. That is so so random. Small right. gay right. I world. I forgot about that. Is that the last time I saw both of you? Yeah. Was that the, the party? The Halloween party. The Halloween place. party last yeah. year. That's I know. amazing. No, That's I crazy. Know. Wait, and sorry, you were saying about people that you still talk. You said you saw Kelly Rowland twice. Do you have you talked to Jason Ritter at all? Are are you guys um, rekindling the romance? Just kidding. No, no I think he's married. No, right? he's married now. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. And, yeah, I mean, we didn't even have a romance. No, no, just, I know, I know. But, <laughs> but I remember him saying like because he knew I was in love with him, and he was so sweet, um, and he he. He, very, he it was sort of like how my mom tried to explain to me the difference between fantasy and reality. And I remember Jason, this is right at the end of the movie, sort of said, you know, Monica, I understand that it might seem like, you know, we're a couple and we're in love. And I, I it, it makes sense that, that you could think that, but we're not really <laughs> <laughs> we're not you're like we're not and there's not two serial killers coming after you and you're like and then you went back to your second grade days and you're like no what? <laughs> <laughs> you're such a good actress that you know there you go yeah. I'm so method, I just, yeah, I'm so method, I just am delusional, yeah. Uh, oh, I have a quick question is. for you. Speaking of hot guys and, you know, um, you in the movie um, Snow White, you were uh -huh. like 18 and Gil Bello was like 30, right? No, I was, I was 15. 15? Uh, yeah, I was what? 15. <laughs> oh yeah, and Gil Bello, yeah, he was, he was like 30. I know, isn't that funny and how things have changed? I, I wonder if they would get away with doing casting like that these days. I mean, in, but... in the defense of the movie, it's not like there's some like erotic- No, there's no. <laughs> I just brought it up because, you know, was there a kiss between you guys? I don't yeah. even remember. Yes, yeah. there, oh, was. there was. Yeah. I oh was so gosh. nervous about that too. I remember just being so, I had a huge crush on him too. What about and... anyone from the creek? Anyone from the creek? Oh, from no. Dawson's- oh, yeah, think... sort of, maybe, you know, well, he wasn't one of, he wasn't uh, he wasn't Joshua Jackson or um James Vanderbeek, but his name was um Jason Bear. He later oh, on yeah, I remember did, him. Um, he was from Roswell, I think. Yes, yes, yes he did that okay. later. Yeah. And He's then he was, he was in one of those movies. He was in a horror movie too. Was it the the I grudge the, or uh, I saw that. Uh, I think he was in the grudge. Yeah. 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 He's cute. He was cute. I, I liked him. So I guess I kinda had a crush on him. Not as crazy as Gil Bellows or Jason Ritter, but you know, 
No, I love it. it. And I totally get, yeah, I I totally get it. It's like when you're acting every day for a certain period of time with someone, you develop bonds with them. That's why a lot of people are either become good friends or how about people that have met like their significant others on sets and things like that, you know? Very easy to do. I mean, Mm. I have speaking from no experience. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I, I, I think, I think that's all we have. We're so, so, I know I've said it a million times, but we're we're, so grateful that you decided to do this with us. Yeah. And we are such fans (laughs) as you know, but like, and again, we can tell people out there that we've met Monica before and like, she is a genuinely sweet nice yes. cool person like like multiple times we've met her and she's always been like the most gracious the most like approachable <laughs> yes approachable and stuff so we're usually so- i'm scared i'm scared no i know and like <laughs> i know and we're I- <laughs> tim gets scared very easily i know but it is so, so nice I. I use it it's so I'm nice green. to be able to talk to you <laughs> and to like ask you questions about the movie. And like, this is going to live on. And seriously, like 25 years from now, you're going to be doing appearances about this. Like, that's really cool. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. it really is. Forever. It really is. Yay. Yeah. Thank you, you so much. Yeah, exactly. So anyway, but thank you so much again for doing Tell this. Tell Steve I said hi. I will. Oh, I will. oh, Steven or Steve? Steve, Steve, tell Steven. Oh, Steve, Steve. and yeah. Steven. Okay, yeah. yes, I'll tell them both. <laughs> both I will. Well, yes, thank you so much again, and um, hopefully we will talk to you again soon at some point. Okay, love you guys. Okay, thank love you. you too. Take care. Okay, bye. bye. Thanks for listening to Happy Horror Time. We're so grateful you've taken the time to listen, and we hope you'll stick with us and spread the word to your friends because there are many upcoming horror movies we'll be discussing and tons of horror celeb interviews on the way. We'd like to take a moment to ask our listeners to check out Happy TV, a brand new free streaming app and website with content dedicated exclusively to the LGBTQ plus community with a special emphasis on content created by members of the community. Not only does Happy TV include feature films, TV series, nonfiction, and short-form videos, but we are so proud to announce that they just added our podcast onto their streaming service. So in addition to the other platforms Happy Horror Time is currently on, you can now find us on Happy TV. That's Happy TV as one word with happy spelled with an I, not a Y. You can download the app from any device and it's completely free. If you'd like to stay updated on our developments, please like and follow our Happy Horror Time page on Facebook. You can also follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Happy Horror Time. And if you'd like to support Happy Horror Time, you can sign up at patreon.com slash happy horror time. Patrons will get access to premium content like bonus episodes, additional audio, and more. And if you'd like to contact us to (laughs) recommend a new horror movie or a horror celeb you know that you'd like us to interview, just email happyhorrortime at gmail.com. We'd love to hear from you. I'm Matt Emmert. And I'm Tim Murdoch. And thanks Thanks again again for for listening listening to Happy Horror Horror Time. Time. Whoop, whoop, whoop.